The collapse of the East St. Louis area weakened a housing market that's been dominated by slumlords and out of town speculators. Vacant houses seem to be everywhere. The impact on residents is often devastating. Smoke fills the sky as another fire rages in East St. Louis. The fuel for the blaze is the dry, rotted wood of abandoned houses, the kindling of countless urban infernos. A dozen families live within a block of the fire that threatens to get out of control. Are you trying to make contact? As firefighters put out the flames, we hear the sirens of police racing to an unrelated emergency. Who owns those houses? I don't know. During the last few years alone, hundreds of vacant houses have burned in East St. Louis, and many of them still stand as charred shells waiting to be torched again. To me, it's sickening. The Tanner family lives next to this mess. They bought their home 30 years ago and take good care of it, but most of the block is abandoned and two of the vacant houses right next to them caught on fire this summer. The fire also damaged the Tanner's home. When people come from out of town, you know, and they always ask that same question. What is this over here? It's a vacant house. As I said, we can't seem to get anything done. This one has a code violation notice on it, dated last September. The owner had 10 days to repair the violations or supposedly feel the wrath of East St. Louis city officials. But that was a year ago. Clearly they didn't fix any of it. So what does that tell you? That nobody follows through on anything around here. I'm not surprised. East St. Louis Regulatory Affairs Director Robert Betts says the city is overwhelmed with the problem. He says the city has suspended demolitions. Betts says budget cuts have gutted his office, which now depends on volunteers to do some of the government work. It's almost to the point where it makes you cry sometimes. It's kind of degrading. What was this neighborhood like when you moved in 33 years ago? This was one of the nicest neighborhoods you could move in. Columbus Liddell raised a family on the opposite side of the city. Now he has a half dozen vacant homes on his block alone. It's hard to swallow. It's hard to swallow because I know I'm not the only one pay tax in East St. Louis. And, and, and uh, uh, at least East St. Louis could show us what they're doing with some of the money. The city has put little effort into going after the people responsible for these properties. The city just hired a collection agency. That's correct. Why didn't the city hire a collection agency years ago? Well, we, we have had collection agencies in other areas. We sought it another way, and then we said, let's stop doing it the way we've been doing it. Is that because it wasn't effective? It wasn't as effective as we needed to be. Ciron and Associates has been one of the biggest property owners of rundown housing in East St. Louis for more than 50 years. The family owned slum real estate empire owns about 500 houses and vacant lots. Many of them look abandoned. But a News 4 investigation found that within the last year, the city of East St. Louis had only cited 13 of their properties for code violations. I was desperate because I didn't have anywhere to live. Mahogany Burns bought this house from one of the Ciron's companies. She wasn't required to have any credit, only a relatively small amount of cash up front. She bought it for nearly $30,000, about six times what the Ciron's company Paid for it. What's it been like doing business with Mr. Ciron? It's been like hell. The kitchen needs major repairs. A bedroom is missing a large part of the ceiling, and the roof appears rotted. It looks like it's wet. It looks like it's going to fall in. The basement smells of old sewage and mold. The sheetrock is coated with what appears to be mold, and exposure to it could create health problems for her. That's why I keep the door shut and I don't come down here. Ms. Burns pays $400 a month, plus the property taxes, utilities, and is responsible for all repairs. The one-year agreement has a final payment of $25,935, and it's due in seven months. Do you think you'll ever pay off this house? No. They know I won't. Mm-mm. -mm. It must be hard. It is because, you know, they prey on low income people. They think they get a deal.
Over the last four years, we've interviewed other people who misunderstood their contracts with Ciron and Associates and realized too late that they got a lousy deal. The impact of that news was often heartbreaking. I don't think there's any other way to put it except that it's predatory. Brendan Rodiger, an attorney at the St. Louis University Legal Clinic, is suing more than a dozen companies based out of the offices of Ciron and Associates for repeatedly violating housing ordinances. What we're asking for is injunctive relief requiring that he actually get these properties up to code and obviously damages for our clients who have had to live in houses that quite frankly, you or I would never live in. The county assessor has appraised Ms. Burns' house for $61,000. That's 12 times more than what Ciron paid for it. Since Ms. Burns pays the property taxes, the seemingly unfair appraisal costs her even more money. Any improvements she makes to the home will also benefit the Cirons, since it's unlikely she'll come up with the cash needed to pay off the loan and the Cirons will remain the owners. Ms. Burns works six days a week just to come up with the money needed to pay for this house. What is it like to work that hard for something and then find out that it's not what you thought that it was? It's really hard, you know, it's disappointing because he prey on the low income, you know. I mean, you know, you can go get his list of houses, you're not gonna find anything in Belleville. You're not going to find anything in Collinsville. Uh, you're not going to find anything in Granite City. Everything is going to be right here in East St. Louis or Washington Park. If you're not embarrassed by the way that you're operating these properties down here, why don't you just come out and talk with us about it? Over the summer, we made repeated attempts to interview company founder Ed Ciron and his son John but they refused. I need to talk to my son. Actually, we need to talk to you. Four years ago, we caught up with Ed at a charity golf tournament. Can you talk to us about how you conduct business? Very effectively. You gotta know that these folks aren't gonna pay that off. Okay. Seriously, don't you know, okay. you know that? Uh, okay, yes. They are the housing market and they've driven the rest of the market into the ground. Um, I, I think it's, at this point, it's hard to imagine a way out of what Ciron has created. The Ciron's cornered much of the East St. Louis area market by supporting key politicians like longtime Allerton Mayor Callie Mobley. Mr. Ciron is, is my friend. He's he a nice man. Mobley admits she never cited any of the Ciron's properties for code violations during her nearly 20 years in office, despite getting many complaints. The former mayor, a notorious slumlord in her own right, had a strong incentive to take it easy on the Cirons. According to records filed seven years ago in the Mobley's bankruptcy case, they owed Ciron and Associates $217,000 for property they purchased from the land baron. Most of the Mobley's net income was used to pay off that debt. Has that been good for the area? That it's so much under his control? I think it's been you know, when you look at a small area like this, I think it's been good for it because there's people that, like I said, could not afford to go to the bank uh, or to a, a, a maybe other real estates and say, well, look, I got $500, I want to put it down on, they don't have the credit, and mm -hmm. you, know, you know what I'm saying, sure. and um, mm -hmm. I just want to be fair. To use her words, to be fair, it's impossible to understand the deeper impact of the Ciron influence unless you examine the role of vacant house fires in the East St. Louis area. A decade ago, the Illinois Fair Plan, the insurance group for Illinois residents who can't qualify for any other insurance, stopped insuring houses in the East St. Louis area owned by the Cirons because they had so many fires and the insurance group's payouts to the Cirons were so high. That means residents who live in Ciron homes can't get fire insurance either. Apparently you did admit that your properties have an unusually high number of fires. Numbers speak for themselves. Do we have a lot of losses? Certainly. Do we evict people that, uh, that don't pay? Yes, sir. Do some of them have fires that just happened? Uh, yes, sir. Now, do we go out and put the finger on anyone? No, sir. If you weren't living here? I'd be homeless. You would be homeless? Yes. This is your last stop? Yes. Following our recent stories about slumlords and speculators, 
Prosecutors ordered two dozen landowners, including the Sirons, to fix up their property. If they refuse, prosecutors are prepared to pursue possible criminal charges against them. When we come back, strip clubs and much more, the impact of a local economy driven by vice.